Derensburg, the tour historian here, and we are at Century Antiques here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. This is such an iconic antiques location for the town. I absolutely love coming here. Uh, they're going to get rehomed soon, so I'm um, coming in doing a few visits uh, while, while they're here at their current location. Um, what a surprise it was to come in here the other day and to see this incredible suit of mail here just hanging up on the wall. Uh, it was labeled, I originally thought that it was Indian uh, armor, but looking at the label and also doing my own research, I found that it is Moro. Now the label listed it as 1840s, um, but I do think that this is probably sometime in the late 1800s. Very fascinating suit, so we can get a close up here on, on some of the some of the details of it. Uh, one that you can see, so this, this is called a Karab Akulang, a uh, suit of, I suppose you'd call it chainmail with plates attached to it. Now, sometimes the plates are actually made of a material called carabao, which is uh, water buffalo horn, but this is not the case. This is actually brass, which is fairly cool. In fact, the entire suit appears to be made of brass. Um, what it looks to be is you could actually take this piece out. But I'm not going to try to force it, but it does look to be like a hinge of some variety so that you could take it out or take it off and on easily. Uh, looks like it's got, yeah, see, we've got the two layers right here. Very cool. So, one of the first questions that you'd ask would be if you're familiar with chainmail, is this butted or riveted? Uh, and, you know, usually uh, European armor, when the two, the two ends of each ring uh, touch each other, they overlap and they have a rivet through it called riveted chainmail, each individual one, whereas the Asiatic ones usually are the two ends of the rings just butt up to each other, which is called butted. And then you look at this one, you can see, I don't know if the camera's going to get that close, but you can see they are indeed butted rings. Very small, too, and they do look like brass, every single ring here, which is very fascinating. I love the design work here in the, in the plates. Uh, it's very, very pretty. Not a lot of the plates are... Uh, decorated like that, but the plate plates, <laughs> the chest plates are, as well as this, uh, what I assume is a hinge or a locking mechanism here. So this is this is fascinating. I love the design of it. I love the wings in the shoulders too, uh, which just adds to a very very fascinating design. Now this is of course the uh, this would be the 1800s, so in the European context, with the British or the Dutch colonizers, they would be having firearms, modern, uh, modern weapons, if you will, modern. Uh, though this would have been one piece of a uh, complement of, uh, of armaments for a native Filipino Moro, meaning of Islamic uh, culture, in the Philippines that would have consisted of the Garabakulang, they would have had a uh, possibly of the exact same type of metal brass, I believe in this case, of a uh, European style Morian frequently helmet, a shield, and a short thick spear, uh, which is just incredibly fascinating to picture that. Now there is actually some beautiful examples of this in the British Museum as well as museums across the world, honestly. And like I mentioned before, a lot of the plates were of water buffalo horn, whereas this is brass. So I think we have a very cool example right here. Um, what I want to do is I wanted to look at the back of the plates, but I think that's just my, I think that's just my experience with Western uh, artifacts looking for a maker's mark. I do, I do not think that this would have been <laughs> marked by the maker. Um, but this is in just phenomenal, phenomenal uh, condition. I'm going to pick it up, see how heavy it is. Oh boy! Yep, that is that is a suit of chainmail. Lay it down here on the back. Look at that. The back even has some beautiful designs as well on the plates. That is just phenomenal. The scroll work is just beautiful. And you can imagine that the soldier would have looked top-notch. Uh, with his full kit, his full armament, and the beautiful fabric that they would have achieved from the trading world that the Philippines is a part of, the trading world of uh, the uh, South, South Pacific Islands uh, that was in the 1800s. Beautiful, beautiful relic we have here. Uh, I wish I could pinpoint the year, but, but like I mentioned, I'm, I'm really uncertain about it. Um, 
and I, I don't have any way of looking into it at this point in time, but if you guys have an idea about this, if you're familiar with how, uh, with the history of these Karabakulongs or similar uh, Filipino military equipment, please share your opinions in the comments. Uh, and I would absolutely love, love to hear your thoughts on this because I would love to learn myself as well. This is a very fascinating snippet of history and I, I feel very honored to be able to take a look at it close up uh, in this in this place here. Uh, this once more is Jerry Berg, the poor historian, coming from Century Antiques in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Thanks, see you next time.